The purpose of the different airspace rules is safety. Some areas of the U.S. have more flights than others. Therefore, the FAA has implemented classes of airspace to reflect this activity. The level of control goes from zero in some areas to considerable control around congested big city airports. Airspace can be divided into controlled, uncontrolled, special use, and other. Airspace designation is arrived at by considering the density of aircraft, the types of operations, the level of safety required, and the national and public interest. Controlled airspace is generally where ATC service is provided. There are different requirements if the flight is IFR or VFR. For example, a pilot flying IFR in controlled airspace will have to file an IFR flight plan and receive an ATC clearance. He will be provided with standard aircraft separation. For VFR flight, controlled airspace means increased cloud clearance and visibility requirements. For the VFR pilot flying in B, C, and D airspace, there are communication and or clearance requirements. U.S. airspace conforms to the International Civil Aviation Organization system. The International Civil Aviation Organization, called ICAO, classifies airspace by the letters A through G. A being the most restrictive, G having the least constraints placed on it. Class C airspace surrounds airports handling a moderate volume of air traffic and resembles a two-layer upside-down wedding cake in shape. It typically extends 4,000 feet above the surface. To operate in Class C, you'll need to establish communications with ATC and hold at least a student pilot certificate. Note that no clearance is required to enter Class C, just establishment of communications. This can be as simple as the controller acknowledging your call sign. A transponder with altitude reporting and ADSB out capability is required within and above Class C airspace. For VFR flight, a minimum visibility of three statute miles is required, and you must remain 500 feet below 1,000 feet above and 2,000 feet laterally away from clouds. You will find Class C airspace on terminal area, sectional, and low altitude en route charts. It's depicted by solid magenta circles on VFR charts. This is the Class C area surrounding the Fort Wayne International Airport. The first layer, called the inner circle, begins at the surface and extends to the top at 4,800 feet MSL. The inner circle has a radius of 5 nautical miles from the airport. The second layer has a radius of 10 nautical miles and has a base of 2,000 feet MSL. Traffic advisories are provided to all aircraft in Class C. In Class C and Class D, Unless otherwise authorized, you may not exceed 200 knots indicated airspeed within four nautical miles of the primary airport at or below 2,500 feet AGL. Class D airspace surrounds tower-controlled airports that do not have an associated Class B or C area. You must establish two-way radio communications with ATC before operating in Class D airspace, but a clearance is not required. You must possess a minimum of a student pilot certificate. Recreational and sport pilots with a sign-off may also fly in Class D airspace. Class D airspace is depicted on VFR charts with a segmented blue line. Many have arrival extensions, giving the airspace the shape of a keyhole. The vertical boundary is charted inside a blue segmented box in hundreds of feet MSL. The top of this Class D airspace is 2,500 feet MSL. VFR traffic advisories from ATC are provided on a workload permitting basis. Some towers operate part-time, and when the tower is not in operation, Class D airspace reverts to the less restrictive Class E or G airspace. 